Ephesians chapter 2. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. I, I apologize for not having a video for you yesterday. Uh, my computer, long story short, needed updating, and uh, well, that took forever, and that led to YouTube not allowing me to post, uh, giving me the post button for whatever reason. I've had that happen one time before. Um, so after doing some restarting and um, much frustration on my part, um, I think it's working, so, so we shall see. But we're going to proceed. Um, and we'll figure it out. So this morning, I want to combine our reading from yesterday and today. So we'll read this morning, Ephesians 2. We'll start at verse 1, and we'll read down to verse 10. Ephesians chapter 1. Um, look, beginning with me there at verse, two, at verse 1. I'm sorry, Ephesians 2 at verse 1. And you were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, and of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Among them, we too all formerly lived in the lust of our flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. But God, being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Verse 6 says, And raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the surpassing riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, and as a result of works, so that no one may boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good work, which God prepared beforehand, so that we would walk in them. Uh, brethren, we need to remember who we are. But not only that, we need to remember who we were. You know, Paul reminds us here that we were dead. Remember, this is written to Christians. We were dead in our sins, separated from God, no relationship with God, no hope. Brethren, hell is our destiny. That's who we were. And here's the thing that we can never forget. There was nothing we could do about this apart from God. In Romans 5 and verse 6, we quote it often, especially when we assemble around the Lord's table. The Apostle Paul would say, for a while we were still helpless. At the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for the good man someone would dare even die. Listen to verse 8. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more, having been reconciled, we should be saved by his life. And not only this, but we also exult in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. Brethren, that explains our situation outside of Christ perfectly, who we were. And not only who we are, were, or who we are. Brethren, that's who we were. Helpless, right? Enemies, even of God's sinners. But God acted on our behalf in spite of our sins, in spite of our turning our backs on him and his will, in spite of choosing self and choosing others and choosing stuff over him. While we were enemies, he acted and saved us from death. And in Christ Jesus, he has given us life. We were dead in our trespasses and sins. We walked not according to God's way, but the ways of the world, walked according to Satan, carnally minded, indulging in the lusts of the flesh. Brethren, that's who we were. We were dead. Verse 4, if you're underlining your Bibles, highlighting your Bibles, this is a great place for something to jump off the page. Every time you come across uh, this page in your Bible where it says, but God, that's who we were. That was our outcome, death, but uh, God. Let, let's go back to verse 4 of our text, and, and let's, let's start there again. But God being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you've been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Brethren, that's quite the change, is it not? From dead to alive, alive with Christ on account of God's grace. He saved us alive. The same power that raised our Savior from the dead, he's raised us up from death to life. We are alive in Christ. Brethren, what a marvelous thought. But the question becomes, why would God do this? Obviously, an undeserving people, God doesn't need us. He's God. He's all sufficient. So why? Well, look at verse 7 again. So then the ages to come, he might show the surpassing richness of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Through us, God is showing all people his kindness and his grace. Brethren, we as saved sinners from dead people to alive in Christ, we are testimony of God's marvelous kindness and grace. Is that how you would describe your relationship with the lost? Something to think about, I think, today for sure. But look at verse 8 again. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. Paul makes clear here, and, and brethren, we, we need to understand this. We are saved by grace. 
It's not something we do, not something we earn, and certainly as a result of this fact, there's no reason to boast. We're sinners dependent upon God's grace and mercy, period. Our salvation is not because of us. Not enough good brethren that we could do to cancel our, uh, our, our cancel the, the debt of our sin and earn our salvation. Let's get that. Let's allow this fact to humble us, even to calls us to be more empathetic and compassionate with one another, to be more patient with others. It really should have that effect on us if we're humble and, and reasonable in our way of thinking of self. But let's also be clear that Paul doesn't just say here that we're saved by grace alone. In fact, I don't see the word alone anywhere here in this text. If you go back to verse 8, Paul says, by grace, Christians here, you have been saved. Then he says, through faith. Brethren, faith is trust. It's trust in God. It's belief. It, it manifests itself in obedience. Faith is our response to grace to be saved. Faith is our part in this. This doesn't mean that, that we are meriting anything, but God does demand our faithful response to his grace. I believe that's clear here. So, so what do we, so if we do ultimately what God says, right? By faith, whether it makes sense to us or not. We just do it because we believe. We trust God to save us. You know, one of the initial, one of those initial expressions of our faith is, is baptism. But why baptism is such a controversial subject in the religious world, it, it's beyond me. I, I truly don't understand it. I have some thoughts as to why uh, of the departure from truth, the apostle, but I, I don't want to go down that road this morning. I'll just remind you a couple of passages for you to spend some time with. Go to Acts 2.38. Spend some time in 1 Peter 3 at verse 21. Spend some time in Colossians 2 at verse 11 and 12. Baptism is an expression of faith. It's the obedience to the will of God. Those who repented and were baptized for the forgiveness of their sins were added to the Lord's church, his eternal kingdom there in Acts 2 at verse 47. Now, certainly we recognize that, that this is just the start of our faithful response to God's grace, just the beginning of a life led by the Spirit as God. And as he directs us through his divinely revealed word, a life characterized by good works. Go back to verse 8 of chapter 2 in our text. He says, for by grace you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we should walk in them. Why did God save us? Because he loves us. Because he wanted through us to show his grace and kindness to the world around us. But notice what we're given, what, what we're, we're given to this new life for. To do good, he says. He created us to do good. That's our purpose. Brethren, as saved people, dead to alive in Christ, we should wake up every morning with the intention of doing good, glorifying God as we fulfill our purpose. Just going about our day doing good, doing as much good, brethren, as we can do, letting our light shine, showing others a better way. Just one day at a time, what's my purpose today? Good. Just do good today. I like simple. Just do good today. Praise God for our salvation, for our hope in Christ Jesus. Remember who you were. Remember who you are. Remember why you're here. Remember who made all of this possible. And just do good. Brethren, then let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, Father, for this day, we're most thankful, Father, for technology that allows us to, to, to reach out to one another and be with one another somewhat daily, Father. We're just so very thankful for it. Father, so much on our minds right now is... As we see our world in, in much turmoil, Father, we pray for all of those right now in Afghanistan, that, that those who desire to, whose lives are, are in jeopardy, that you would bless them, that your will would be done, Father, in all things. Father, we certainly pray for those who are Christians over there to bless them and give them safe passage out of that country at this time, Father. Father, we're uh, mindful right now of our brother Jimmy Wells, Father. We love him and Patsy so much, and we know how difficult of a time this is for the family, Father. Be with Jimmy. Be with Patsy. Be with Dan. Be with Pam as decisions are, are being made, Father. Just bless them. Father, we ask that you be with all those who are suffering. Be with Savannah. Father, be with Ellie. Be with Jenny. Be with all those that are battling cancer, Father. For, I, for answered prayers, Father, we are most thankful. Father, bless us this day. Be with those who are fighting this pandemic, even some of our own brethren right now who are sick with the virus or quarantining as a result of exposure, Father, be with them. Bless us this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.